Hello, hello. The topic of today. You know when you have like something happen over and over and over again and you can't stop thinking about it and then it's showing up in every place, shape and form? I think that means get your butt on a live and talk about it because maybe other people are dealing with it. But I've been thinking a lot about the term struggle, or as we like to say, improve it, I'm challenged with this situation. But how many people out there feel like right now, I'm just gonna use it. Mitch Newman would say struggle is a negative term, it's a chokehold. So I'm gonna go with that. I'm gonna say, how many of you feel right now that you are challenged, <laughs> not in a weird way, but that you are challenged with something and that it is bringing you mental stress. It's something that you're waking up with every day. Maybe that you're talking about all the time. Um, you know, something that you just can't release. Um, often in my business, you know, I hear people say, you know, I, I'm struggling, I'm, I'm struggling to talk to people. I'm struggling to, you know, get, I, I was in this wellpreneur, I was in this other academy, I heard lots of different women in the industry just talk about the same thing over and over and over again and their struggles, their struggles. And I just, you know, thought to myself, if I said that out loud every day, <clears throat> I'd be struggling too. I'd be struggling too. And at some point we have to get sick of our story and we have to shift what we're saying um, because what we think is what we say. And so if we can release that, I mean, sometimes you have to start from the outside and work in. So there's definitely some mechanisms that you can take to stop with the story of what's captivating you. So I got a couple examples that I was thinking about today. Um, you know, there's a couple things you can do with struggling. One is you can just rip off the band-aid or rip out the hair, okay? So I had a struggle today, I had a struggle. Um, one of my extensions, <laughs> I got I got this little, this technique called in, NDR, natural beads, and I got an extra amount of hair, we're getting real. And one of them just like tore away, like from the sew. And for 24 hours, I had this like long dangling row of extensions just like hanging down off my head. So it's been full time ponytail, but knowing it was there, knowing that half of that extension was hanging out, was just mentally tearing me up. Silly, right? I know we got bigger struggles out there, but you know, I just thought to myself, I'm tired of thinking about it. I'm tired of worrying about it, so I'm just gonna rip it out. <laughs> so, I just ripped that hair out. And you know what? It feels lighter, it feels better. I kinda like it. And I'm not even thinking about it anymore. I've had that in for so long. It's like, oh, what a release. I feel so light, I feel light. And all I did, guys, I just ripped it out. So how many of you right now are just obsessing over something? Some of you just need to rip that Band-Aid off and like diminish the problem. Like get over it, get past it, stop holding on to it. Like what? Like I don't wanna take it out, I don't wanna take it out. There goes, like rip it out, like get rid of it. And I don't feel lighter, I feel good now. The second thing was, I was in yoga class today. And I had worked my legs hard. I had done an orange theory. I was feeling very sore today. And I also had sinuses going on, which throws off my balance. And I go into yoga and I am like red and competitive and I'm everything a yogi is never going to be. 
Um, I get hurt in yoga because I'm going in with people who practice daily. I show up once every three weeks. I'm trying to do it more, but I look around. I'm like, oh yeah, I'm going to get in that. I'm going to get in that position. Then I get hurt in yoga. I definitely don't have a yogi mindset and the whole thing about, you know, releasing and it, no. So anyway, I go for a good sweat, good stretch, but sometimes I get myself hurt. But, you know, I was telling myself today, I can't, I can't balance. Like I can't balance today. I can't do any balance moves today. And we did a tree pose and a tree pose is where you're standing up and you put your leg up like this and then you put your hands up in the air and you're supposed to like take your eyes up to the ceiling and still be balancing and anchored and rooted in on that one leg. And I was like, my tree was like a tornado <laughs> was hitting. I'm already 5'10 and like my legs are everywhere in that class. I'm awkward yogi, but I like it. So, you know, I'm like, I'm not going to be able to balance. And when my tree flutters, it's like a big old scene. I'm thinking, I wish I was in the back of the class right now. Um, and then the instructor said, like in a militant voice, which speaks my language, I like that. She said, stop struggling. Like that's what she said. She said, stop struggling. <laughs> and all of a sudden I just went, <laughs> and I was like, I was balanced and the sore glutes, the sore quads, the sore everything I had in my head and the congestion on why my equilibrium would be thrown off. It just like, it took me out of that. It, it shocked me that that soft yogi voice said, don't struggle, you know? And it kind of knocked out those excuses from my mind and I stood anchored in that position. And it was like, I was like, there it is again. like there it is again. Like if you can just shred all the thoughts and all the reasons why not, the struggle may not be there anymore. So I was thinking too, in my devotion this morning, you know, we're called as Christians over and over again to lay our burdens at the foot of the cross. We're supposed to leave it there and put it down. And so often we just would like in our, our sins and we just want to pick them back up and hold on to them and live in this place of just shame and sorrow and just yuck. And that is not what the cross is for. My dad always growing up told me this illustration about, you know, when you're asking for forgiveness and you're, you know, you're trying, you're repenting and you're walking away from that. Like you have to take that, you put it in a box and envision yourself putting it in a box and laying it way up high and you don't need to open it back up. You don't need to live with it. And I think so many people are just they're addicted to their struggle. They're addicted to their stories. And so maybe we all can't just rip out the hair and put it, you know, toss it. And maybe we can't just snap into, um, you know, submission of it. Maybe we can't just release it with the demand of it. Um, but some things we can do at times is walk away from it. We can walk away, we can recreate a new mindset, a new energy, and take us out of that bad place of defeat and be able to come back in with a mindset of refreshed and conquering. And maybe that's, you know, what you need to do today. It was funny, this was the third thing that happened to me. I picked my daughter up at school today and she was a wreck, like a wreck. I mean... I feel like I have a, she's five. I feel like I have a 15 year old. I laid her down a little cheese and chicken quesadilla before her gymnastics and she was bawling. I hate quesadillas. When grandma was here, she gave me donuts. Thanks grandma. Yeah, so it's like we're detoxing right now. Um, and I said, no, deep breath. You can go to your room until you're done crying. So she threw herself up the stairs and you know, the 
slam door and it was like really quiet for a while and I'm like oh gosh what's going on is the room gonna be teepeed are they having is she having a barbie pole where she's like pouring water all over the floor to spite me has she taken all her clothes out like what is she doing that's so quiet you know and <laughs> so um I went up there and she is snoring in her bed that little five-year-old who never sleeps is crashed out in her bed right now, just snoring. And, um, you know, I was just thinking about as adults, how much we'll sit there and we'll stay in the mood or we'll stay in the attitude or we'll stay in the problem when what we need to do is you know, number one, stop talking about it. Stop talking about it. Stop telling the story to everyone about your struggles. That's, I mean, you hear it, you hear it. Okay, we get it. Like you need to go work and come back. So stop telling the story, number one. Um, number two is break the routine. Like get out, um, focus on, go focus on something that makes you happy and creates new energy for you to come back. Like if you're having a relational problem or a fight, sometimes, you know, it's, it's coming, it's taking that space, it's getting your mindset right, getting your energy back up, um, breaking the routine, going and doing something that releases endorphins, um, maybe giving to someone else, going to serve someone else to get yourself in a mindset because maybe what we think is a struggle, it really isn't a struggle when we start looking at others and serving others. So, um, but I think probably some people can relate out there that you're sick and tired of your story and you're sick of the way it's making you feel. You're, you're sick of the problems you're having. You're sick of your business being this way step away and create some new creativity and some new energy or go take a nap or <laughs> go ask a friend to tell you to freaking snap out of it and stop struggling or if it's something that you can control like you know rip out the hair just rip it out and stop messing with it anyway hope this helps you today was on my mind, thought I'd share. Have a good one. I'm gonna go wake up Miss Princess and hope she's in a new space for her gymnastics.